Vesselam Efendimiz Hazretlerinin adı Tam Münevvar ve Tamazı Sürekleri'ne Salavat-ı Şerif'i getirenlere afir ve afiyetlere hayırlı mağdur. Hâle Ezbâcı Tâhirat-ı Evler-i Resûl-i Sâbidin Efendilerimizin Seyri Enbiya Azam-ı Resûl-i Fâhir Hâzirat-ı Ervah Şerifleri'ne Hîbin Bilal-i Habeşi Recâllâhu Anh Efendimizin Şeyh Hümet Sahib Hüseyf Şâbî Kıbrıs Rabbani Hazretleri'nin ve Alan Husus bu caminin bayinesi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş İmam Muazzin kayınlarının ve kafir ehli iman ervahı için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Allahu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi ya eyyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala sayyidina Muhammad Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayya ala salam Hayya ala salam Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve la alihi ve sahbi ecmain. Nehamedullah ta'ala ve nasdafir ve şeru an la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerika lah. Ve şeru anna seyyidina Muhammedin abduhu ve habibuhu ve rasuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve la alihi ve zivacihi ve sahabi tabi khulafin rahşin bahadin min ba'di. Ve zemmati ala tahkik, huzzimhi fi almati khulafa rasulü ala tahkik. Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakır, Umar, Usman ve Ali, Muala Bekir Sabit Tabi'in, Ridvan Allah Ta'ala aleyhi mecma'in. Ya ayuhal mu'min al-hazirun, itaku Allah Ta'ala, ve te inna Allah hamal lazina, teku al lazina hum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin, ve salatu ve selamu ala ashrafil anbiya min musalin, Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammedin, ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ajma'in. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the Universes. He is... Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the most merciful, who is firmly established on the throne. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth and whatever is between them and whatever is beneath the soil. And if you speak aloud, it is no matter. He knows the secret thought and that which is yet more hidden. Allah, there is no Allah except for him. To him belongs the most beautiful names. Sadaqallah al-Azim. And may all peace and blessings be upon us, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, who says, when someone sends salawat on me greatly according to what is due to me, Allah Azza wa Jalla creates from that word an angel with one wing in the east and one wing in the west with his feet resting in the lowest part of the earth and his neck right under the arsh, bending. Allah Azza wa Jalla says to that angel, bless my servant as he blesses my prophet. And that angel will continue to bless that servant until the day of judgment. Ya Allah, bless and grant peace and blessings to the spirit of our master Muhammad among the spirits and to his bodies, among the bodies, and to his grave, among the graves, and to his position among positions, and to his witnessing in witnessings, and to his remembrance when he is remembered, a prayer from us on our Prophet. Ya Allah, convey the greeting to him from us when the greeting of peace is mentioned. Peace be upon the Prophet and the mercy of Allah and his blessings. 
And may peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Fakhul Khulafi Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. <coughs> o believers, all thanks and praises are due to Allah that we are about to enter into the blessed Maulid of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, the night when he was sent to this world. Believers are going to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says in Surah Al Yunus, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the bounty of Allah and in his mercy, in that let them rejoice. Sadaqallah Lazim. Believers are going to follow the Sunnah of the Sahabi Kiram. That once the Holy Prophet ﷺ came to a circle of his companions and asked them, What are you doing? And the Sahabis answered, We have come together to pray to Allah and praise Him for guiding us to His religion and blessing us with you. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said, I ask you, by Allah, is that the only reason? And they answered, by Allah, we have not come together for any other reason. Holy Prophet ﷺ then said, I'm not asking you to promise me because of any suspicion but because Jibreel السلام, came to me and told me that Allah Azza wa Jalla is boasting of you to the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to celebrate and rejoice for that holy prophet والسلام, The Sahabi celebrated and rejoiced for that holy prophet. And that tradition was carried through the awliya and the ulama and the salihin for 1,400 years, reaching to us, inshallah, we as believers are also going to connect to that tradition of thanking Allah for our Holy Prophet And part of that tradition of remembering and thanking for the birth of Holy Prophet is remembering the events that happened surrounding his birth. Imam al-Busri is recounting these events for us in the Qasidat al-Burda Sharif saying, his birth distinctly showed his pure origin, the excellence of his beginning and his end. When he was born, the Persian Empire discovered that they were going to end and were warned with the approach of misfortune and punishment. And the walls of the palace of the Kisra trembled and crumbled and his army was scattered, never to be united again. And the jinn, they were screaming at his appearance and his nur was glowing and the truth appeared with these lights. The unbelievers became blind and deaf amidst the announcements of these glad tidings. Nor did they hear, nor did they see the lightning of warning. And even the fortune tellers told the people that their false religions would not stand and they witnessed shooting stars on the horizon, falling just as the idols were falling on the earth, so much that the shaitans were running away from the path of revelation. What are these signs indicating? Why did Imam al-Busri mention these signs in his Qasidat al-Burda in this way? An intelligent man must think and he must reflect. He must not just think and reflect about our small problems and our small lives in our families, in our businesses. We must think and reflect on the Holy Prophet والسلام, and on the greatness of our Holy Prophet. That is Mawlid. That is what Mawlid is for. To understand and to thank Allah. To understand more about the Prophet, to build connection more to him. And then to run, to be more in his to our Prophet out of love and fear to our Prophet. Mawlid is not for us to sing qasidas like carols and to eat food. Mawlid is not to make us to sink deeper into ghaflat. Mawlid is for us to wake up to the reality of Rasulullah and from that to wake up to our responsibility and duty as members of his ummah. So what is the meaning of the signs before the birth of the Holy Prophet what is the meaning of the palaces of Kisra crumbling, of the Persian army scattering and the shaitan screaming, of the idols falling and of the light of the Holy Prophet والسلام, spreading across the world? It is an indication and a sign that the Holy Prophet والسلام, came to bring down zulm, oppression and tyranny. 
worldly zulm and religious zulm. It is a sign that the Holy Prophet ﷺ came to bring down all idols. It is a sign that the Holy Prophet ﷺ came to be the Padishah of this world and the next. It is a sign of a Holy Prophet ﷺ's haybat and majesty. Today's Muslims, they are trying to delete these parts from the character of the Holy Prophet. They do not want to present to him as a general. They don't want to present to him as a ruler. They do not want to present to him as having authority and majestic power. They want to present him as Astaghfirullah, a weak, a meek, poor, weak man. They say, look, he sewed his own clothes. He mended his shoes. He did housework. Yes, Prophet ﷺ did all of those. But he also organized a government. He also maintained an army. He also entered into statesmanship. He also spread Islam in the entire Arabian Peninsula and he ruled. He also had dialogue with the kings of the East and the West. He also wrote on the Archangel Jibreel and ascended through the heavens. He also entered into the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Maidan where even the wings of Jibreel would burn. He was the best of men in every respect. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an said, I have never seen someone who is braver, more generous, more courageous, more radiant, or more handsome than Rasulullah In the battle of Hunayn, when the believers began to fear and the enemy was surrounding them, Holy Prophet came down from his horse and said loudly to the people in the face of the enemy, I am the Prophet and this is no lie. I am the son of Abdul Muttalib and this is no lie. He commanded so much respect from those around him that even his enemies were shocked and they were unable to look at his face. One of the disbelievers who came to negotiate the terms of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah went back to the Quraysh and he said, O oh people, by Allah I have been to the kings and to the Caesar, Khusro and Najashi, but I have never seen any of them have as much respect from their people as Muhammad has from his Sahabis. Wallahi, if he spat, one of them would catch his spittle in their hand and rub it on their own face and skin. If he ordered something, it was carried out immediately. If he made wudu, they would struggle with each other to take the remaining water. And when they spoke, they would lower their voices and would not look at his face for a long time out of respect for him. When he used to call on one of them, they used to answer. They used to answer like this, like Hazrat Abu Zar who said, at your service and your pleasure, Ya Rasulullah, may I be ransomed for you. If the square head ones were to hear this from Hazrat Abu Zar, they would claim that he's making Shirk, because he's literally saying, Labaik, here I am, Labaik. When they were on the verge of death, they remembered him, and they defended him, and they praised him. The disbelievers were about to kill Hazrat Zaid ibn Dasima, and Abu Sufyan, who was not Muslim at that time, said, I ask you, Ya Zaid, by Allah, don't you wish that Muhammad were in your place, Allah so that we could cut off his head instead of yours, and that you were with your family? And Hazrat Zaid said, Wallahi, I would not want to be with my family and comfortable if I knew that even a thorn would hurt the Holy Prophet, And Abu Sufyan at that time said, I have not seen any people who love anyone the way the Sahabi they loved Muhammad That is the akhlaq of the Holy Prophet. That is the devotion of his Sahabis. Muslims today are asking, why are we so weak? We are weak because we don't love anymore. We are weak because we fear. 
It is because we forget the strength and majesty of our Holy Prophet. And this is not something that has been in our history. Never. This is something that just came in the last 100 years. The Muslims who came before us understood this sunnah of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. They understood the sunnah of haybat and majesty and strength because they believe in khilafat, because they believe in kings and sultans. They never thought for an instant that the feet can be the head. They understood the sunnah of living like a believer and standing straight like a believer. This kind of Islam that we have today, the kind of Muslims we have, have become today weak and apologetic. This has never happened in the history of Islam. Our Shaykh is teaching us, saying, don't you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you, as long as one believer is standing on the face of this earth, I'm still going to make this religion to take over the world again. And I'm going to complete my nur, my light. Don't you know that ayat? And the Muslims today are thinking, yes, Allah needs us. No, He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need anything. So, who is this saved group that the Holy Prophet is saying? is staying on the Sirat al-Mustaqim. He is saying, those ones that are going to hold on tightly to my sunnat and the sunnat of my sahabi kiram. And the sunnat is the lifestyle of the Prophet. Sunnat means how the Prophet lived. What did he eat? How did he eat? When did he walk? Where did he work? What did he wear? How did he appear? How did he act? That is the sunnat of the Prophet And in these days, also they are trying to make the Prophet somebody who is very passive, who is just saying, yes, uh -huh, yes. Don't you know so many hadith is sharif about the Holy Prophet that there were times when he was so much th uh, thrown he was shown with so much majestic anger that the Sahabi Kiram couldn't sit in front of him. And when he was talking, everything was shaking. What kind of leader he can be that he doesn't have that majestic power that's coming? What kind of president? What kind of a king? What kind of head of army? What kind of father it would be that the father is not going to be able to scream and to be strong to his children? And the children are always going to say, oh, my father is just like my mummy. How foolish is that? Yes, the 21st century people are falling into the sickness. And because they became like that, they are thinking that the whole world is like that. O oh, Muslims, O oh, believers, we have to know our Prophet. We have to know the reality of our Prophet. We cannot follow our ego's idea of what the Holy Prophet was like. We cannot follow our enemy's description of what Holy Prophet was like. We have to follow that real Holy Prophet that the only way, the only way is to follow his inheritors. Our Grand Shaykh Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani is explaining it so beautifully. And so simply saying, so many Muslims, millions of them, are cheated by shaitan because they are refusing to follow awliya. Millions of them are cheated by shaitan because they are refusing to follow awliya. They are saying it is not from the time of the Prophet. They are foolish. Therefore, shaitan is carrying them. We are trying to make you friends of awliya. Awliya are friends of Allah. They are friends of the Prophet. Those who are friends of the Prophet, they are friends of Allah. Therefore, we are asking to give you the love of awliya. Allah Almighty was saying, you must be with my friends. Yes, so simple. Oh believers, we should wake up in this maulid. We should wake up and understand a little bit more of that most beloved one to Allah. And we must learn about him. And we must learn about his sunnah, and about his way, and about this way, and about his mission from those who have never been separated from him. We should learn about the Holy Prophet from those who are his friends. We should learn about the haqiqat of the Holy Prophet والسلام, from those who are the Ahlil Haq. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Haq has come and battle has perished. Surely battle is by its nature bound to perish. Sadaqallah al-Azim. O believers, in this mawlid, we are praying to be on haq, following the Rasul of haq with the people of haq. Inshallah rahman. Amen.
استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله لازم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم وحده لا اله الا الله وحده لا اله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الله الحمد كدير لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الله الحمد كل شيء كدير لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الله الحمد كل شيء كدير لا اله الا انت سبحانك من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك Subhan kudusun rabbin rabbil malaikati wa rabb. Subhan kudusun rabbin rabbil malaikati wa rabb. Subhan kudusun rabbin rabbil malaikati. Inna dinna illa Allah al-Islam. Qam salah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.